it's great to have you on our show. Thanks for joining us, Sam. How are you? Thank you. Good, good. I'm glad to be here. Thanks, guys. Um, oh, you're welcome. Uh, what a fucking brutal movie this is. Like, Beaten to Death is the name of it, and that is that's the synopsis <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have a clear um, affection and affinity for the genre, and I'm just wondering what it is about it that, that does it for you. Well, this, so my my sort of creative partner, um, Ben Jung Clark, and I, we sort of grew up together and, and we bonded over horror movies. So we kind of went through this phase in our mid to late teens where we were just like absorbing as many horror movies and genre movies and um, you know, it was in the good old VHS and DVD days, so we have, like, a lot of fondness for that era. And so when we started doing stuff ourselves, we were just drawn to that. So, um, and we just we just find it really fun. <laughs> like, there's honestly nothing more fun than making a horror movie. I mean, we've oh, only we- made horror and, and action movies, but... Um, you know, I don't think that you'd you'd have as many laughs on on a drama set. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because that was I, yeah. Go ahead, Ben. I was gonna say I thought you were gonna say we just really enjoyed beating the shit out of someone and then <laughs> beating the shit out of them again and then beating the shit out of them again. And, <laughs> yeah, uh... that, that was enjoyable too. So Tom is, an, <laughs> Tom is our lead is um is our other friend from high school. So that was certainly fun too. <laughs> I was going to ask how he came about because you've worked with him a couple of times and only someone that knows you very well would agree to do something like this. <laughs> yeah, basically. But yeah, like we've all been like super close mates in school. Um, and so um, Tom Roach, I- I'll just call him Roach. Um, Roach was in our first movie, Blood Hunt, as you know, playing mm. lead bad guy. And then, and he did a phenomenal job, you know, and then the, the crazy thing about Roach is that he's not a he's not a don't, he's not a, a, a professional trained actor. Yeah. Um. I mean, he's been in two feature films now. He's your he's like, your Bruce Campbell, mate. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um. He's, yeah. Yeah. We, we have actually had that <laughs> that discussion before. <laughs> um. What was I saying, Tom Roach? Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So then then when we came up with this idea. We were like, well, it's got to be Roach. And so I was still, like, trying to piece together, like, what the story was and how we'd pitch it to him and everything. But then um, one of the other guys that was involved was just like, hey, Roach, I'm going to make a movie. It's called this. And he's just like, I'm in. <laughs> so, I mean, did he did he know what he'd have to go through before he agreed? Because, I mean, you put him to hell and back. And yeah. fucking hell, like, he's practically blindfolded for the whole film covered in gunk like that yeah. can't have been easy well the initial pitch was it's called beaten to death and you're going to be blindfolded for about half of it and he was like yep yeah, cool i'm in <laughs> and how did that i, mean, go I don't down? know who i yeah. <laughs> sorry ben i cut you off <laughs> i was gonna say i don't know who I, who I felt more sorry for at the end of the day him taking off all that gunk <laughs> or the next day the continuity person trying to figure out how to put it all back on again yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as continuity goes, it was always just like more dirt, more dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so, sure, I'm sure he, he, like he's told the story, he'd get home and he'd jump in the shower and it was just filth coming off him, just pure filth straight down the shower drain. That is awesome. Hey, I'm wondering though, like, do you, as a fan of, you know, this sort of genre, do you write for the shock value or do you, you know, are you artistic and let the story you know, inform how gross it gets. Um, which way does it work for you? I think it's a bit of both. Yeah. So, like, we love the nasty stuff because, again, like, when you're sitting in a room and you're coming up with this stuff, you're just, like, you're just having a great old time, you know? It was yeah. like, oh, now we can stab out his eyes and then he can spew on himself and ha, 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 ha. <laughs> um, But, I mean, in, in this, though, I think that all of the violence does sort of have context to the story yeah uh, and so like occasionally you'll you'll we'll get a review and it'll say like you know senseless violence blah 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 and i'm like well for one there's nothing wrong with senseless violence but for two i think that you can see very much cause and effect in this yeah. movie um and it's not just people being mean to each other for the sake of it you know there's without spoiling too much someone yeah. dies, someone then sort of feels like they need to 
avenge mm-hmm. that and yeah well, you've kind of, you know, making movies like this, you've got to be prepared to answer those questions, don't you? Because so many people just knee-jerk when they react to these kind of movies, people that are not used to watching horror films. I don't know why they have an opinion at all if they don't watch them in the first place, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like um, whenever you're talking to someone that's like, you know, not a horror fan or whatever, um, they you're often asked the question, so why horror? And, <laughs> and It must be yeah, a sick you know, bastard that writes that kind of stuff. <laughs> Well, coming coming from you, like you understand, but um, but when it's someone that's like you know not of that genre, and it's like, well, well we love it, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Like uh, what, any- do you, what, what do your parents think of what you do? Oh, so like I love telling this story about my mum, where um, I think that what set another thing that set me off on this like horror journey journey was um. When I was a kid, like, I was always wanting to, like, I was going to the video shop a lot and I was wanting to get, like, the really cool stuff. And, like, not that I'm from a particularly conservative family or anything like that, but but mum was very respectful of the rating system we have here in Australia. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so, like, it wasn't until, like, as I got closer to, like, being able to watch MA movies and R movies, like, you know, she, I think at 14, maybe, and depending on what the movie was, maybe I could watch an MA and... Um, so then I was just kind of like just making up for lost time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. a good, good answer. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, used to get, I used to get so mad, like the boys at school would be talking about like, oh, this movie Predator and bloke gets his arm shot off and <laughs> Islander, they're chopping dudes' heads off. And I'm just like, come on, I want to see this. Yeah, I, I, we kind of all grew up in the same kind of environment, I think. Yeah. It was all, you know, when we got our fix of these films, it was always at someone else's house. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or a sleepover. Yeah, that, you always had that one friend whose parents didn't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. You know, I'll take the R-rated uh, Total Recall, not the uh, M-rated. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Actually, on Total Recall, I can remember one time um, it was on TV and it would have been like the cut version mm. and mum let me watch it and I would have been younger. And like, can you remember the bit where the dude like um, put like lets the baby out of his stomach? And I was just like, no, nah, no, nah, too much, too much. <laughs> yeah, hope mum doesn't walk in right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of mother, I want to just um, touch upon the story for a little bit here without giving any spoilers away. And and if we do venture into spoilers, I'll remove it from the cut. How about that? But um, I'm wondering about the mother in this film. Um yes. Was there a reason that you wrote her into it? Um, I was trying to figure out if she's there against her will or, or did you envision her to be the matriarch that kind of taught her boys what to do? What was her purpose? Yeah, so she she was the mother. And so I guess what we were trying to do was um, have it as like just the country family that's like quite, I won't say inbred, but quite insular. Yeah. Um, and so that's why you've got the mum and then... You've got the three boys, which I described as the Billy Goats gruff. It was like, oh, wait till you meet my brother. Wait till you meet my bigger brother. Um, yep. So, no, mum wasn't held against her will. Okay. Um, and I think that Ned was actually a very good son for looking after her. Yep, totally, totally. I sort of There's so many ways that people can interpret that, though, because she kind of yeah. doesn't talk. She gives the side eye quite a bit. Is she sort yep. of in distress? Like, it's, it's a really cool thing. Like, you probably had it set in stone how you envision her, but I think there's a lot of interpretation there. Cool. And, and would you like to, but well, thank you. And another fun fact is that was um, Ben Jung Clark's mother. <laughs> oh, was she there against her will? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, um, just on Facebook today, she she posted this like really like in, really like cute photo of her at JB Hi-Fi where she picked up two beef DVDs. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And back to like back to your parents. You said your mother was very respectful of the ratings. Um, did, did she attend your premieres and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Like mum and dad still help out massively. Um, so yeah. like they um them along with one of my friends um help out with the catering. Dad's like um well he's he's retired now and um but he's like a like a very hands-on like tradie guy and so he like builds his props and um and he's very proud of the fact that when Jack I'll, I'll spoil it, when he ends up in a grave, <laughs> um the dad dug the grave, this old bloke of like 70, he was there. <laughs> that's awesome except I had one little criticism was that Jack was supposed to be blind but he dug this grave in like this perfect rectangle (laughs) 
<laughs> I, mean, I wasn't going to say anything to you. Dan. Can have, you can have a feel for symmetry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so when it comes to making a film this explicit, this graphic and pushing the boundaries, do you struggle getting like a, a rating that you that you want? Do you want it to be a, a heavier rating than what you got? Are you happy with the um, rating you got? Yes, yes, we did actually. So um, our previous movie, Slaughterhouse Killer, got an R rating in Australia. And so then we should, we thought that beaten to death would be a shoe in And then it got MA and we we're like... <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> what I saw, what I saw was clearly an R-rated film. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I don't know how that came about, but yeah, yeah. No, oh well. Oh well. No. You know, you know, it, it, more people are going to watch it legally. That's true. It opens it up to a broader audience. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Good. People that probably shouldn't see it will. <laughs> well, yeah. I guess uh, so long as you're with a parent or guardian, then you <laughs> yeah. know, the five-year-old can watch it. So um, we like to sort of, you know, as we get to the towards the end of these um, conversations, we like to sort of go into your childhood and find out the kind of films that you were raised on. And given the story you told us of your mum, what kind of movies were you watching as a kid? What lit the bug? What what was it that got you into filmmaking? You know, I can actually recall the very moment that I was like, yes, I want to make movies. And it's probably not like a real cool one, but um, I was I was at Kmart. And I would have been maybe 13 years old. And they it was when Star Wars Episode One was coming out. And they had, had like all the toys and like then they had the, the TV that was just like playing the trailer on repeat. And I watched the trailer for Episode One <laughs> and it showed like the Gungans coming out of the mist, like riding their horse things. And, and I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. I've got to do that. So, was, little did we know that that was going to be the best part of the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> was that stuff coming out of the mist? I remember that trailer. I remember yeah. being in the cinema, like going to the cinema specifically to watch the trailer yeah. and watching that and just going, this is going to be awesome. And then yeah. watching the film and going, this is not awesome. This is- <laughs> <laughs> it's still my favourite of the, the prequel trilogy. Oh, the, yeah. But it's also funny, Ben, like you and I, I have a sneaky suspicion we're quite a bit older than Sam here. So our, our perception of that movie is probably a lot different. It's, it's tainted. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you can't, uh, yeah. So given like, that. Like what Jar Jar Binks, it was, it was, <laughs> there was a bunch of, you know, at a certain age, you're like, no, I can't. can't, <laughs> can't get it. He squeezed me. <laughs> <laughs> Is it gonna die? That's sticking with it. was just you like I can't uh like am I watching the Muppets here? What's this? I mean uh, here's a here's a question that you may have just answered like moments ago. So um you're known for all of these hardcore horror films, but is there a movie that you love that people would be surprised to know? Please don't say Phantom Menace. <laughs> yes. no, no, no. This is a random one. Have you ever seen the movie Begin Again? Oh, yes, it's the second part of John Carney's Oh, trilogy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fuck I yeah. just have, like, the biggest soft spot for that movie because I, in complete contrast to what we're talking about with the movies we make, it's just so nice. It's just, oh. like, it's a nice, easy watch, and they're singing the songs. It used to be a poster behind me on the podcast. Um, oh, really? My favourite film of all times, Once, the first one. Like I still haven't seen Once, but I've, it's been on my list for so long. But, oh, yeah, like, once on. a year, I'd probably watch Begin Again because it's just so bloody lovely. Yeah, it is. I love that. Bloody lovely. Like coming from the <laughs> gore hound himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, you know what, man? Like Beaten to Death is a movie that every, not only gore hound, but horror fan should track down and watch. And, um, you know, I loved it. I love I love that you pushed the envelope and there's there's no soft spots in this movie. There's no, <laughs> no breathing there's no, room. There's no off position on the beaten to death switch. No. Yeah, 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 basically it just starts with a guy getting beaten and it ends with a guy getting beaten. And is there um what's next for you? Are you gonna ramp it up even harder? Well, we've sort of we kind of feel like in a way we've like closed this trilogy that we've made between Blood Hunt, Slaughterhouse, and, and now Beaten to Death. And like that we did those all really low budget, DIY, down and dirty, and all kind of dealing with similar themes and like um all shot similar locations and so we are trying a few different things now where like we're still wanting to work in horror and action um but we'd like to actually get something of a budget together for the next one so yeah well i i mean for a low budget film beaten to death looks glorious mate it looks like there's 
plenty of money in it. So you've made a really good looking film, but good luck with that. Like I'm down for whatever it is you do next. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you for your time. Um, we're going to push on with the show, but dude, um, everyone should go and check it out. I think you can buy it now. It's available on one of the platforms. Um, definitely get behind it. Thanks, mate. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Gotta help me. I think I'm cute. Rachel! Well now, aren't you a tough guy? What brings you here? Just a bad decision. Say that or what? What's the gun for? More land, more rules. Because of you! My brothers are dead! Can you hear me? Let me get one thing straight. This is just the beginning. Help! This is something that you're not gonna survive. <laughs>